Not all artists that produce religious work are themselves religious, but an exception to that was Bernini. Bernini was deeply religious, but he was also especially interested in the theater. He did set designs, he wrote plays, and he brought together his deep religious faith and his interest in theater here in this great masterpiece, The Ecstasy of St. Teresa. Within the Cornaro Chapel, within the church of Santa Maria della Vittoria, it's important to think about the sculpture with the architecture because Bernini was both a sculptor and an architect. And you could say he brought together not only sculpture and architecture here, but also painting because he's using colored marble. There's also fresco up on the ceiling and the stained glass, and you've got gilding, and so it's <laughs> it really is an entire installation piece. He used whatever means he could to do what all Baroque art tried to do, and that is to involve the viewer, to inspire faith. And to inspire faith again in the miraculous, and that's precisely what this is about. The subject matter is the ecstasy of St. Teresa. That is, a woman who had recently been canonized, been made a saint, who is here having one of her not-so-uncommon visions of an angel. That's right. She was canonized in 1622, and she wrote accounts of the visions that she had of angels. I can read the one that Bernini used for the ecstasy of St. Teresa. Please do. Beside me, on the left, appeared an angel in bodily form. He was not tall, but short, and very beautiful, and his face was so aflame that he appeared to be one of the highest ranks of angels, who seemed to be all on fire. In his hands I saw a great golden spear, and at the iron tip there appeared to be a point of fire. This he plunged into my heart several times, so that it penetrated to my entrails. When he pulled it out, I felt that he took them with it, and left me utterly consumed by the great love of God. The pain was so severe that it made me utter several moans. The sweetness caused me by this intense pain is so extreme that one cannot possibly wish it to cease, nor is one's soul content with anything but God. This is not a physical, but a spiritual pain, though the body has some share in it, even a considerable share. That last line is especially important. Both the text that you just read and Bernini's approach use the physical body and a kind of sexual symbolism to get at the spiritual experience. That's right, to represent it for us. We need to understand St. Teresa's spiritual visions by means of a metaphor. That's all we have. We don't have visions, you and I. Most people don't, but St. Teresa was blessed. The only way that Bernini and St. Teresa herself could explain that to us was by a metaphor involving the body. This made her moan. This was a physical experience. And so Bernini has translated that relationship between the physical and the spiritual into stone. And if we look, for instance, at the two figures, we see this gorgeous angel who's plunging that arrow that she spoke of with its iron tip, pointing it right at her. And you can see her body writhing under the heavy cloth. He has this very sweet, angelic smile on his face. His body is very graceful. There's such a difference in that gauze fabric that he wears. Well, look at the way the wind seems to whip it around his body, creating this fabulous torsion in such contrast to the heavy quality of the cloth that she wears. She is of the earth. He is of the heavens. And that also in contrast to the feathers that we can almost feel in his wings. Bernini is using marble, the same substance for all of these, but making them seem such different textures. Well, it's almost impossible to remember this as marble, in fact. Especially because the whole thing seems to float in midair. Well, he's done that by supporting it from quite a deep recess so that everything underneath is in shadow and the miraculous is expressed. You know, this is the Counter-Reformation. This is a moment when Protestants in the North are revolting against the Catholics and are saying that, in a sense, the pomp and the ceremony of the Catholic tradition is not necessary it gets in the way. The Protestants said that we should have a personal relationship with God, that we didn't need all that ceremony of the church. And what Bernini is doing here very cleverly is in fact using all of that pomp and ceremony, all of the fabulous gold, all of the marble here, to express a direct relationship between an individual and the spiritual realm. Giving us a kind of dramatic access to that. And the main thing that Baroque art always does is it 
involves the viewer, and here Bernini does that in a number of ways. He's not just thinking about the sculpture of St. Teresa and the angel, but about the whole space of the chapel, because on either side we see relief sculptures of figures that look like they're in theater boxes, as though we were part of an audience. So we become immediately part of the work of art. Look at the way that the broken pediment, this sort of proscenium, this stage-like space, literally seems to open up as if the marble is moving to reveal this very intimate image and to give us a sense of the specialness of our vantage point. But the figures on the upper left and the upper right are very curious. They are like us in that they are seeing this sacred event, but they're not like us because they are the patron and the family of the patrons. This is the Cornaro chapel. And Federico Cornaro was a cardinal in Venice, but had important ties to Rome. So we have Teresa and the angel on a cloud appearing to float in the air with rays of gold that seem to be mysteriously illuminated from above. Well, we're in the church looking at the chapel in the late afternoon in the summer, and light does seem to be miraculously pouring down on these figures from above. And if we look way up, we can see that there's a fresco on the ceiling of the chapel that shows the Holy Spirit, a white dove, and light is emanating from that, and it almost seems as if the light that's pouring down on these two figures is coming from the Holy Spirit. But Bernini, remember, is a dramatist, and remember, is a stage craftsman, and he's using all of his tricks to make this happen. And so the trick in this case is that there's a window hidden behind that broken pediment that shines light through and then down onto the sculpture. Bernini's doing everything he can to make us walk up to this chapel and go, <gasps> and feel this moment, this spiritual vision in our bodies. You often think about how Baroque art appeals to our senses in a way that's so different from the High Renaissance and its appeal to the rational mind. This is not at all about the rational. This is about change. It's about metamorphosis. It's about spiritual awakening. And it is incredibly powerful emotionally. It's about that union of our world with the spiritual world. 